Now, yesterday we woke up to the news that His Holiness Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI had died at the age of 95. The presidency has released a statement saying President Cyril Ramaphosa joins South African Catholics and adherents globally in mourning the passing of His Holiness. For the first time in history, funeral proceedings will be led by incumbent Pope Francis. We're now joined via Zoom by Cardinal Wilfred Napier, the Archbishop Emeritus of the, of course, diocese in Durban. Thank you so much uh, for your time this morning on the agenda. So now the presidency in its statement says we reflect with great re uh, regard on the spirit of leadership of Pope Benedict XVI that he provided to his church and humanity as a whole. Please take us through uh, back to some of his time as a leader of the Vatican and by extension the global Catholic community. What was his legacy? Thank you very much. And the first thing I'd like to do is to thank the president and the presidency for their message of uh, condolences and sympathy. And in particular, I think, uh, noting that he was a great leader, Pope Benedict XVI. And I think I would like to begin by saying gratitude to God for the gifts and graces which he gave to the late Pope Benedict. And these, I think, made him a great leader and a principled leader. And there were particularly these gifts that I um, would have detected in my relations with Pope Benedict. An extremely sharp mind, um, an extremely warm heart, but especially a deep faith. And a faith which expressed itself in the words of Saint Benedict, his, uh, his patron saint, namely, let nothing come between you and Christ your Lord. That, I think, was one of the guiding principles for Pope Benedict XVI. So I want to thank everyone for um, their, gratitude, their tributes to Pope Benedict. And for me, it's just a thank you for the loving and caring personality that he had. Now, Arch, I just want to know, are you already making plans and how will South Africa be represented at the Vatican? <laughs> It's not an easy time to travel, especially with the, in the long weekends and so on. So getting a ticket is something problematic and we'll still be trying to get uh, to see what we can do in that regard. But we will certainly be sending our condolences and our messages of support to Pope Francis and all those who will be gathered for the funeral. And looking here, uh, looking back here at home, of course, how will the faithful be marking these days leading up to the funeral? on the 1st of January? Again, I think it's a case of each bishop and each parish priest having to uh, improvise because the time hasn't been uh, very good for us to, to make arrangements. Uh, certainly here in Ishawi, where I'm based at the moment, we'll be doing something on Friday night. We thought of Thursday, but it's not practical during the day. People are working. So Friday evening, we will certainly have a, a a holy hour, uh, followed by Holy Mass for Pope Benedict for the repose of his souls, his soul. And especially, I think, in gratitude for the service that he has rendered the church. Mm. Now, the fact that uh, Pope Francis will be the first pope in history to preside over the funeral of another pope, how significant is this? I, I think it's a great tribute to both Pope Francis and Pope Benedict. First of all, when he realized that his health and other conditions didn't enable him to continue uh, as Pope, he had the courage and the principles to say, if I can't do the job, I'll step aside and let somebody else do it. And I must uh, really commend the grace with which Pope Francis, when he was elected, accepted Pope Benedict. And they became real, you could see, people who had a high regard for each other and I think a deep friendship and a deep love for each other. Francis often went up and visited with him. Anytime there were major functions at the Vatican and if uh, while he was still able to, Pope Benedict would have come to St. Peter's for those functions. When he couldn't, those who were involved in the function went up to pay him a courtesy visit, as happened recently with the new cardinals. They all went up to greet uh, Pope Benedict in his residence. So I think that was one of the great things about the relationship between Pope Francis and Pope Benedict. There was never any rivalry, and I think there was a great respect 
for one for the other. Cardinal, we have to thank you so much for your time there for speaking to us. That's Cardinal uh, Wilfred Napier, Archbishop Emeritus of the uh, Diocese of Durban. Thanks very much for your time there on the agenda this morning.